Okay, and welcome to what is now part two of our exercise on uh, formulating financial statements from raw data. In the previous video, what we did was we, we took a list of raw data from uh, General Mills, a hypothetical raw data from General Mills, I suspect, and uh, we classified it as either balance sheet or income statement uh, information. And so we put together a, an income statement based on the numbers we had above. And then we labeled the items that we used as income statement items. And then <clears throat> we, uh, I'm going to actually zoom back out on this, I think. Give me one second. I think that's okay. Um, we made a balance sheet and we labeled items uh, up on the top as balance sheet items. Okay, and then so the video started to get a little bit long. It was around 16 minutes. So I decided that we would just do a part two and <clears throat> we would um, we would uh, put together the statement of cash flows and then there's a there's a little B requirement down here that we have. So we want to understand that on the statement of cash flows we have three parts. We have uh, inflows and outflows from operating activities. These are the day-to-day -day activities of the business. Uh, inflows and outflows from financing activities. These are far less common uh, occurrences and then investing activities. These are also fairly uh, rare. About 99% of all transactions are operating activities, <clears throat> but the financing and investing activities tend to be much larger. Uh, so let's look at our, our little template that we have here. Again, you can kind of tell this is from a, um, you can see the drop down boxes. So this was adapted from an online uh, exercise. And we have three drop-down menus, and so those three drop-down menus are going to represent the three portions of the statement of cash flows. <clears throat> now, what they have done up here is they have provided us essentially with the answers, uh, net cash from operations. So this would be all of the uh, money coming in from operations and all of the money going out from operations netted to this figure. Okay, and so operations, uh, the net cash from operations is by far probably the most important component because there's so many more transactions to, that to uh, consider. So I'm going to abbreviate this as statement of cash flows or SCF. And then this says net cash from operations. So I'm going to put that net cash from operations okay and that figure was 2841.0 uh, actually didn't need the point there and then we labeled that again up here as a statement of cash flow item there was a whole lot of work that went into getting to this net cash from operations. I want you to understand that, but we're just getting started. So just taking the final number is fine for our purposes. Uh, financing is usually the second item, and that's the order that we have it. Net cash from financing is 5,445.5. So let's write SCF here for statement of cash flows. And then net cash from financing activities, or we'll get as much of that in there as we can. And that is, that was 5,445.5. And then the, oops, I guess I let you see that. So let's see here. Net cash from financing activities is 544.5. Okay. And then let's go back up here. 
and find investing, net cash from investing is a negative figure. And this generally will be the case. Uh, investing is, uh, well, sometimes financing will be negative too. Uh, we hope that operations are not uh, negative. But this kind of makes sense because when we buy brand new assets, you know, even if we sell off our old assets, the net cash going out is often more than what we have coming in. So the fact that this is a negative figure here actually kind of makes some sense. So the first thing I'm going to do is label this SCF. And then I'm going to come down here. And I won't cheat you this time. Net cash from investing. And that was, I'm going to use some brackets here, 8,685.4. Okay. Now we also have an effective exchange rates on cash. And um, so with a larger company, we, we do have to deal with this because these are global businesses. And they've, they've provided this here. This figure can be positive or negative. Um, and fortunately for them, it was a positive. So 31.8. Um, really not critical that you understand everything that's going on with this number. Uh, but we have to use it uh, because they actually ended up gaining uh, some cash from this. Uh, 31.8 million dollars in fact. So uh, good for them. So this is another statement of cash flow item. All right. So we're going to take that 31.8 and we're going to plot it right there. Okay. So the next item says net change in cash. We're not provided with that figure above. Um, but what I'm going to do, though, is because because my writing is not that easy to read, I'm actually going to move back up here and we're going to look at the figures up here and we're going to plot them into the calculator. OK, so the first item was operations and that was twenty eight forty one. Okay, these are the again, these numbers are in millions, but uh, this is good enough. So 2841 and we're going to add to that net cash from financing. So they borrowed some money. Five, four, four, five point five. That's this figure right here. I'm going to hit an equal sign. And the reason I'm going to do that is because my next number is negative. And rather than get all fancy, I'm going to now subtract the 8685.4 685.4 okay and let's see here I hope you know what I need to go back I need to clear this out actually I do apologize I misread a number so I'm going to start over 2841 was our net cash from operations. Okay, and then I want to add the financing. Again, I do apologize for the confusion. I misread a number. Then I'm going to subtract from that 8685.4. All right. And that gives us negative 398.9. And then I'm going to add 31.8. Okay. And so that gives me, um, I guess, I think I may have done that right the first time, actually. But uh, in any event, let's move this up. And so the net cash, net change in cash, is actually going to be a negative number. And it's going to be a negative 367.1. Okay, 367.1. The next item that we're going to need to retrieve from
from the top is cash at the beginning of the year. And I'm going to label this as the statement of cash flows as well. Now you say, well, wait a minute. Now cash is on the balance sheet. It is. But the, remember, the balance sheet is a snapshot at a point in time. And since we're dealing with the end of the year, cash at the beginning of the year, that would be on a completely different balance sheet. All right. So this is 766.1 uh, at the beginning of the year. So we're going to label that as statement of cash flows. Uh, cash beginning of the year. And that figure was 766.1. Okay. So we have our 766.1, and I'm going to add it to the negative. We had the net change in cash was a negative 367.1. I'm going to add to that the beginning cash. This is how we reconcile to our cash balance on the balance sheet. And we come up with 399. Okay. And if we come back up here, and we look at the uh, cash and cash equivalents, it's 399. So this proves that we did everything correctly on the statement of cash flows. Okay. And then we have a little B requirement here. It says what portion of the financing uh, is contributed by owners. Okay. So what we're going to do when they, when they're asking us this question, what we're essentially uh, saying is that um, we're going to look right here at the total liabilities and total shareholders equity. And so the assumption that's being made here is that uh, any debt that we have is from financing. So we're, we're including everything. We're including, including long-term uh, debt for you know, major capital expenditures like buildings and so forth, all the way down to the utility bills that we just haven't paid yet. All right. And then we are um, adding to that the uh, equity or the net assets, and we get a total. So we have to be very careful. It says what, uh, what portion of financing is contributed by owners. We're going to take the equity amount and simply divide that by total liabilities and equity. So we're saying that uh, uh, total debt and equity financing, this is not exactly the way that you'll hear this all the time, but that's what we're going to say right now is 30624 And then what percentage of that is provided by owners? Whatever portion is right here under equity. Okay, so if that's true, uh, and it is, we're going to take the 6492.4, and that's, again, that, that figure is up there in our little uh, legend at the top. So 6492.4 divided by not the, the debt amount, but by the total of 3624, and we come up with I uh, see, round your decimal to one decimal place. So it looks like 21.2%. 21.2%. So we'll go ahead and get that answer in there. And at this point in time, we have done, we have fulfilled all of the requirements for the question. And then we labeled all of these items here uh, as to what financial statement they are a part of.